construction around or what? Oh, I had to I had to air up a tire and I there was uh, traffic. Yeah, I didn't want to get run over. Hi, I'm Tony Fastadder. I'm Tony Fastadder. I'm Tony Fastadder. My family has been blessed to farm in Montana for over a hundred years now, and it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior Jesus Christ. Well, today's one of those days that we don't want on the farm. 100 degrees and windy. Crops are going to be under a lot of stress today. But, nothing we can do about that. Colin's getting a little bit of fertilizer that's left over put back into the one of the fertilizer bins so we can get that thing washed up. Has a few peas in it out of Colin's drill. Oh well. That much fertilizer on them, they might not grow. They might, they might be super peas, you never know. Hey Macy girl. Hey what? What are we doing? We were drowning gopher holes, but now we are watering the grass out <laughs> in the pasture. Huh. How hot is it out today? 90,000 degrees. <laughs> Tony's son's out, gun's out today. <laughs> the first time this summer he's put on sunscreen. He did put on sunscreen, didn't he? Yeah. Responsible. Did we get any gophers, sadly? No. no, we didn't drown out any, did we? Well, we got the truck all washed out. That thing's ready to get back on the road hauling grain. Got the shop all kind of tidied up on this side. Nice windy day. It works good to get all the dust blowing out real well. He's just wrenching away now. What are we doing? Uh oh. Oh, did the trouble light just die on you? I think so. You can't see what you're doing back there anyways. So. No, no reason to see. Lifters? Yeah. Got a misfire on one of the cylinders, so. Hopefully that fixes the problem. Yeah, it's gonna be a hot rod now. Yeah, but I'll baby it now. <laughs> yeah. You know what you're doing? No. Nope. Learning from YouTube. Is that the inside of an engine? Nope. How many miles does it have on it by now? I think I'm almost at 220. 500,000, here we come. <laughs> Getting closer. Got the exhaust back on. That's the most important piece. Because, yeah, them bolts are hard. Hopefully this fixes the problem. Well, I am uh, gonna go run around on the east side of the farm and the north farms and see what things are looking like over there. They have not been sprayed yet. Everything here at home back over west is done and struggling. It uh, It is really getting dry on the west side. We've had less than, I don't know, inch and a half maybe, somewhere in that ballpark of moisture and no sub moisture going into the year. It's hurting. Canola leaves at home are curling up today in the wind. It's been windy for four or five days and we need a rain bad. I need to go check and make sure that the crop isn't growing too fast on the east side of the farm that we can't use some of the chemicals we need to use. Uh, we'll have to change our plans if that's the case. So this is the county road. Water was running over right here. You have kind of much debris washed up into the fields. Wow, this is like the second spot I've come to now on this road. It's not good. That had to be... Oh man, look at that. The road's all washed out. That had to be 10 foot deep water. Eight foot deep water. Unbelievable. So this is a storm last, almost a week ago, that just missed our yard, just dumped inches of rain, inches and inches of rain over here. So, I haven't been up here to see any of this yet. It's pretty crazy. Another lot of crop got hailed out over here, a lot of rain came down so fast but it actually drowned out gophers in the fields not in the valleys just out in the fields filled up their holes they couldn't get away from it so i guess that's one way to get rid of your gopher problem well it's definitely a lot wetter over here well it was before we got all this heat and uh got some heavy rain and it looks like we might have had a little bit of Hail, which normally at this stage in the game that doesn't hurt us too bad but uh, definitely bang stuff up a little bit so peas really took a beating at least right here 
I'm not really sure what's gonna happen to some of this. Looks like there's a new growth there, but they did lose some height the way it looks. And there's no blossoms yet, so that is good. We sprayed these now and those blossoms could go sterile if uh, using the wrong chemical. So all this grass, we can kill that and get these cleaned up. It rained a couple inches here and uh, I knew there was a little bit of hail, but we did a little more damage than I thought there would have been. An early crop like this with hail insurance is usually kind of a, I don't know, they usually play the wait and see game and we'll see at harvest how bad it hurt it, which isn't what I bought hail insurance for. You bought hail insurance for the hail storm, not what it could have been later, you know? You know what I mean? Yeah, not a good deal. We're about a half mile south of where we just were and these peas look great. They are, uh, I don't hardly see any hail damage on them. So luckily, it looks like it's a pretty narrow street. Boy, this alfalfa is a little bit different here than it is on the west side of the farm. Man, like, knee high. Definitely had some hail damage on it and just starting to set some, start to set some blossoms. So, yeah, we better go get the stuff over on the west side cut and get over here is pretty quick. 30 miles from here to the west side of the farm. And it's a, it's a Garden of Eden over here. Man, it's different compared to the west side. Well, the wind's calmed down. Time to go spray. Sure does look pretty with the sun at the evening time. Man, look how tall my sprayer is. Ride homes here. Guess we're heading home. Morning. filled up got another batch already on the trailer ready to go last pass down here in the valley 497 acres and counting this uh, washout here definitely could use some filling in it's a rough one and deep Heading to the last 500 acres of peas. Just got all batched up. We got the tanker here topping off the spray trailer. Got another batch of chemical already on the cones. We just filled up with the last load here. Oop, didn't reset this. It won't let me while I'm spraying. Oh well. There we go, that's what's remaining. This little area here and that there. It's supposed to be about 160. 65 acres should be perfect so I think anyways just knocking out more acres another 530 ish on that one Probably the most productive spraying day we've had. We are just cruising along. I got, uh, I have about two more loads. I made 2,000 acres for the day. Wash out and watch my booms. We're good. But uh, a few things that I was gonna show you guys in the sprayer. This is the Aim Command Pro Box. This is what individually controls the nozzles. So every nozzle all the way across the, uh, sprayer represented here by a dot or a little blue dot 
This green line is showing what is not running. So this side is shut off because I'm overlapping, if you can see here. And uh, that blue line shows the duty cycle of how fast that nozzle is pulsing. You can see how it's not a steady stream, it's flickering. And that is represented here by that blue line. So right now I'm running about a 40% duty cycle. I'm gonna start speeding up here. That line's gonna go up higher. What's really cool about that is it'll turn and it'll apply more on the outside of the corner. It'll compensate for that turn. So that's uh, awesome for some of these chemicals that are really sensitive and sensitive soils that the chemical could burn the roots or keep a seed from growing. This AIM command is also very nice for drift control. It uses a larger tip and uh, since it's alternating on and off, it will use a lower volume than what that tip normally is rated for and that will help it with any drift. So if there's a wind, windy days, we can spray in a little bit more wind than we could with the flat fan nozzles without the AIM command. Just starting my last round here. Just got my little fuel alarm. Oh, my Still got pressure. Oh, it's gonna be close. Well, that was quite unexpected. 2,002 acres. That is, uh, that is a one for the record books for us. Man, that was uh, crazy. Didn't think we'd get that much done today. But it's awesome. We have uh, 1,500 acres of canola and about another 1,800 acres of wheat to spray. So we'll see what we can get done tomorrow. Well, I came too early. But a couple of this spraying left. We'll get it done. Morning. Too bad someone muted you. Fly script's still stuck up there, so. No more squeaky for now. All right, just got the first load out, just pulling up to the trucks. Here we are again, 1,000 acre field, 1,073, something like that, total acres on this one. So truck is down here in this corner. I am on this top edge here going back and forth, and when I'm getting close need to fill, I run down, fill up, come back up here, make a bunch of passes back and forth. We're gonna work the long way of the field down, and see how this works. We're gonna have some L-shaped passes and tracks, but or sprayer tracks, not gonna matter. I wish we had some of those swing sets. We can't tell what that is there. Pivots. This close to irrigated land. Maybe, maybe if you buy this rental ground out when it's up, maybe we'll put some pivots on it. That'd be pretty awesome. There you can really see, looking kind of towards the sun, the curtain spray coming out. Misting, we are misting crops because we are not drenching them. Oh, we're at the end. Shut her down, turn her around. And comes fast at 20 mile an hour. And here we go again. And we're spraying again. Can't really see very well this way, can you? Kinda. All right, I'm gonna let you guys settle down because I probably made you a little sick. You Dr. Phil today? Water boy. Water boy. Little status update. We are at 625 acres sprayed for today. Basically this afternoon, almost three o'clock. Uh, we might have been going a little before noon. I opened my lunchbox and we started spraying, so my noon anyways. I've been running the dash today, uh, batching for Tony. He's spraying on his uh, what sometimes called a big block, I call it the 454. Looks like we got a low tire. See the difference between how far off the ground that one is versus this one. So I started kicking tires 
and lo and behold, that one's squatting. So, safety first, I broke out the orange safety vest because you never know if there's going to be traffic on this road. Is there a uh, road construction around or what? No, I, had a I had an air for tire and I, there was uh, traffic. Yeah, I didn't want to get run over. I got all the water from the yard on the tanker. Now I got to run over there west and grab some more water there and then head up to them. Less than 500 acres to go. Almost 400. Yeah, about 500 acres left to go yet. And that's all the wheat. So, I'll just pop it up over the hill there with some more water. 